Hello and welcome back. Today on the bench is a big green amplifier that some of you may have seen me start to build and had a, quite a few problems with some years ago. This whole amplifier, the way I've gone about designing it and building it and what have you, is a lesson in how not to build a valve amplifier. Just about everything that I could have done wrong, I have done wrong on this amplifier. So for a start, I started off with an overly complex design. Originally, this was a Dynaco ST70 mains transformer, but it was a replica of a ST70 mains transformer. And I had two output transformers supposedly built to the A740, I think it is, output transformer spec, Dynaco specs but they turned out not to be the case they you know they were rubbish but before we get on to that bit so yeah the, the whole design was overly complex instead of just building a sort of Dynaco ST70 replica I ended up building you can see that Class AB2 amplifier with a valve tone control and yeah as you can see there's a hell of a lot going off it's really busy. As far as the tone control goes is concerned I had a hell of a job with this because it wouldn't remain stable it just kept um, oscillating to low frequency. I put a lot of this down to the amount of coupling caps that the tone control had. You have to have lots of decoupling caps so that you don't end up with DC on your potentiometers because potentiometers don't like DC, they crackle, etc. This is obviously <coughs> this is obviously more important when you've got when you're using valves which run on high voltage. So that's how it was originally using 6164 valves. That was a bad choice in that the, uh, the original output transformers were only rated supposedly at 35 watts. A pair of 6146s are capable of 100 watts easily in class AB2 and about 85 watts in class AB1. So I had to scrap that basically because we had loads of instability problems and there we go. We gave up on that idea. The other reason that it was wrong was this business. For some reason I got it into my head that I, instead of having dual gang potentiometers for the tone controls, I got it into my head that we would have separate tone control pots for each channel. I don't know why, I, I really don't know what the hell I was thinking there. Uh, then I had a screw up with the mains transformer. The mains transformer was noisy and instead of just pouring a bit of diluted um, thinned varnish into it and tightening it up a bit I totally rewound it but when I rewound it I wound it wrong basically. I used too thick a wire for the primary and secondary meaning that I ran out of window space so then I had to re so then I had to wind another transformer to provide the other voltages that we needed. So that was a screw up there. And going back to the power supply, the power supply is, overly, is still overly complex in that it has a soft start on it which really isn't needed. So where it stands at the moment is is that I'm just going to use a pretty simple common cathode voltage gain stage long tail pair two output valves but then we've got these three holes here where the tone control valve sat so I've had a uh, cunning plan there and this is the cunning plan uh, these are, if I can remember how they go, they sit something like that. 
and to add even more complexity to it I'm going to put a couple of VU meters on there which will need well which will mean that I'm going to have to build um, a PCB for the VU meter driver so without further ado I'll show you some of the ideas that I've got for output valves and then we'll power it up and we'll see how we go after ditching the idea of using the 6146Bs or whatever they are which are they're just the wrong valve for this job they're really powerful valves and they what's the point of using valves capable of nearly 100 watts you know on a 30 watt amplifier it's just a bit silly isn't it so what I have done is to use a couple of now then what are they six BG6 GAs and these are television valves so they're going to be the output valves we have got a 12 BH7 as the long tail pair and originally I was going to use an ECC82 with both the anodes and everything strapped together so effectively the valve was paralleled but I thought that was a bit of a waste really and it it wasn't needed so I dug amongst all my different valves and found these six CL6s and so I've got them strapped in triode mode and then just as an experiment um, a little while back I managed to get hold of some 606 GBs or I think the, another name for them is 5881s the Subtex and so they should run in ultra linear mode so we've got a couple of those to try as well with the same voltage amplifier, long tail pair, face to driving circuit. Although in this case I really don't think that I will use these on this amp. Part of this amplifier power supply has got a regulated screen grid supply which will just be superfluous if we use these 606s but we'll pop them in and give them a go and see how they compare to the 6 BG6 GAs I think that's it mate okay this is the circuit this is the uh, schematic some of these uh, values like the uh, dropping resistors here are changed we still got the 12k but I changed this to a 47k because he was not getting enough voltage to this front end 6CL6 front end as you can see it's pretty simple uh, blah 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 6CL6 configured in triode mode goes into the 12B87 that very drawn very oddly here is running off a CCS constant current source sink and they just goes into our 6BG6s and I've pretty got essentially the same circuit with the 6L6s but we're not getting the regulated 300 volts to these screen grids we're getting what we're we getting I don't know it's about 450 volts but first before we do anything because we just made changes we've got to start it up slowly on the variac and the lamp limiter take some DC readings before we go anywhere because we don't want to stick some new output valves in there and end up burning them out as you can see here this is the load line for the 6BG6 this I've had to sort of guesstimate here because I think this one what is this one running in all oh, right 250 volts screen grid I'm running at 300 volts there's no 300 volts 
screen grid graph on the data sheet. So basically all you do is just sort of add a few curves there, just sort of guess as they are, because the more HT, the, more, the higher the screen grid voltage, the further apart these control grid lines will be. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you sort of pop down here, you can see we'll sort of be running at about minus 25, minus 30 volts grid bias. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to check out some DC voltage conditions to make sure that this side is working the same as that side. I've only just built this, so I want to be a bit careful. So I have it on the lamp limiter and the variac. Um, I've put it on the variac because there's no output valves in it, so the HT will be higher as a result. So I've just just sort of set the uh, mains voltage so we get about the same HT that we would have if we had the output valves in there. To take the DC readings, you just let me just move you back. To take the DC readings, you just want to make. Uh, a little chart up like this so whatever it is whenever it was that always helps because um, in the past I've got loads of pages of this stuff and I've no idea what it refers to or what it means so your HT uh, which you can't see HT1 that'll be the HT at the big cap here HT2 HT2 and 3 there are two coupling caps down here. Our whatever our negative bias is set to, plus a negative rail. Our heater voltages, which will be in AC obviously, in this case, and then all the um, anodes and cathodes. I'm not too bothered about the grids at the moment. I'll just give them a quick test, but I won't actually write them down. So I'll just flick that to one. It will take a little while to come up to full HT. Well, I've got minus 24 there on the uh, bias. I always have a metre set to read the bias. So I'm going to increase. I don't know why that. So. Uh, I'm going to knock that up just for now. Let's just test the HT. 421, that's a bit high. I'm just going to set it to 410. I only need to know roughly what the crack is. So I'll start off with V1, which is a little hard to get at because it's just sort of prototyped at the moment. So there's a anode. I'm using my left hand, which I shouldn't be. Right, we've got 102. Just write that down. Let me just check the other side. I've got, yeah, more or less the same one. 02.8. Cathode should be about 3 volts if I can get to it. Bit of a uh, jumble in here. Oh. Where is the cathode? Come on now. From what I can see it's around here. Right, that's 4.4. 4, which is higher than it was the last time. Where are we? 4.4. 4. Right, and that's 4.2. I can smoke something a bit. Bernie, but I'm not quite sure because I've been spraying paint today. Right, and the next thing I need to do is check these anodes on this uh, face splitter. 149, 135. Right, and the cathode is about right as well. So this is just a preliminary test. 165. 165, what did I say these was? 
a little bit lower. 135, that's probably because the uh, it's probably got set to a different bias. Right, let's knock that off. Then we'll put some output valves in and then we'll actually uh, test it, all of it, everything that I have on this chart here. One moment. I've got the output valves in. I've got some 606s, 588s ones here and some 6BG6 GAs in this side. And I've still got it on the lamp limiter and on the variac. Let's power it up. Alright, well that's interesting. Oh, right, I don't know if you saw that. There was some smoke coming up off those two resistors there. Right. I did this earlier on and what these are are a pair of 220 ohm resistors and that's basically so that the heaters don't float and as you can see from these ones they are totally burnt out one measures about 2 meg the other one measures about 5k now and so when I powered it up earlier they just turn into fireworks and as you can see I'll see if I can zoom you in I'm not sure if you can see that there's some burning around here and there's also some, some burning on the wire going to the cathode now I can't understand that let's go and just draw a quick schematic and then have a think about this. If we just draw something what we've got there. Now I've made sure that everything is connected properly. I've, measure, uh, I've made sure that there's no difference between the 5881, 606 GB, GC and all the rest of it. They're all the same according to the data sheets I've got. So we've got a couple of windings here. This is off our mains transformer. We've got two windings like that. There's the primary, these are secondaries, 6.3 volt secondaries. These go to our output valves. Bump. very rough representation and then what we've got uh, let me just see if I can draw this I'll only draw one so we've got resistor there resistor there 220 220 ohms they're connected together and that goes to ground so that our heaters aren't floating because no electrode or no part of the valve should be floating so why are they burning out what is happening there's 6.3 volts right remember this one is also got the same thing let me just draw that in quickly just to try and get my head around there now that why should that right the other ones aren't burning out so if there was some sort of fault you know like both of them going to ground if that's the problem and if there was a fault on one then there should be a fault on the other what the hell the other thing i checked for to see if there was a heater cathode short and there isn't I tested these valves prior to just putting them in there so I've really no idea what the hell is going off so and what I'm going to do I'm going to flick my meter 
onto AC and I'm just going to take an AC reading quickly so I mean as soon as I put that on this starting to burn out I mean all oh, this is a bit how you doing but there is no shorts that I can see right power on whoa see what I mean that's what they did earlier on Okay, what the hell? Right, so we've got a couple of meters here. This one is monitoring our grid bias. I've set it to minus 25 volts at the moment. This one is monitoring and for any DC, well it's set up as AC at the moment on the heaters. So let's apply some heater voltage first, 6.3 volts AC, and now we'll apply some nano voltage. Because one thing I noticed when I was powering the amp up, the resistors didn't burn out straight away. They only started to smoke and eventually uh, burn out when the bulb started to warm up. So at the moment we're, we're measuring no DC on the heaters and we have got a anode and screen grid voltage of 100 volts. 200 volts. Three hundred volts. About three hundred and fifty. Four hundred volts. So that one seems to be okay so far. So let's power that down. Kill the heat of power. So let that voltage fall. So that's one tested. Let's test the other one. Heat of power. Flick that onto DC. Apply anode voltage. 100 volts 200 volts 300 volts 200 volts, 250, 300 volts, I don't know if you can hear the power supply is making more noise. 350 getting towards 400 see that there 400 
So that started to break down at 400.